Welcome to WordPath, the show about Oklahoma Indian languages and the people who are teaching and preserving them. Tonight is the first of two programs which will feature an October 23rd event sponsored by the Intertribal WordPath Society. It was called a Celebration of Oklahoma Indian Language and Culture and was held at the Cleveland County Fairgrounds in Norman. The purpose of the celebration was to make the public more aware of Oklahoma Indian languages and to demonstrate their importance to traditional Indian culture. This is the first annual celebration. This time we featured six languages, Choctaw, Comanche, Creek or Muscogee, Kiowa, Oto, and Ponca. We also invited stores and language committees and teachers to offer language and culture related items for sale to the public and they brought wonderful books, tapes, t-shirts, dolls, and works of art. There were Indian tacos and other delicious food and we all had a good time. Tonight's program focuses on the welcoming remarks and the stories. Traditionally, most of our tribes generally open any uh, event or festivity with the opening prayer, so we're going to do that this evening. I hope I don't know what you know if Rai egraji, nahoe, radawide. Jesus, we call upon your name this evening. We ask that you watch over it this festivity. As the people go home this evening after the event, we ask that you take care of them on the way home. We ask that you be with us while our uh, little committee here puts on the, the first language preservation uh, program. Uh, as you know, dear Lord, that most of our people are beginning to lose their language, and this is just a way of uh, promoting uh, our Indian languages. Again, with your help and your spirit here, we know that uh, we'll have a successful evening. All this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody here this evening. Welcome to the visitors. Welcome to the presenters. And hopefully, everybody will be participating as the evening goes on. Uh, we have different things where you can participate, so uh, we'd like to see you do that. <clears throat> this uh, event has been planned so that uh, we can relax, listen, and join in and participate in the things presented this evening. So I want to say good evening. Stungo. Good, at least I know there's some creeks here. <laughs> okay, what we're going to be demonstrating tonight is that the different sounds of American Indian culture, the language, uh, the songs, and we have songs where you are going to be able to sing before you leave here. So be ready to do that. The key word this evening is listen. Because these truly are sounds that are probably not going to be here in 200 years. And that's a long, long time because we're going to lose many of our languages way before that time and we know it. So, Intertribal Word Path Society is 
going to try to do everything we can to, to make our languages live just a little bit longer. Okay, when you, when you think about it, uh, I don't want to bore you here right at the beginning of the program, but when, when you start talking about something you feel passionate about, you can just talk on and on and on. And I, I don't want to do that, but I just want to uh, say that, you know, in, in cultures all over the world, we either annihilate each other or we assimilate and become mixed groups. Or we live side by side in these different cultures and we never really know each other very well. And that's the case here in Oklahoma. We have Indian cultures living right here and, and enjoying their way of life, what little that they've got left of their traditions and their languages. And we, we want to share those things this evening and let you know that we're still very well and alive and we're doing all we can to revive our languages and maintain our languages. So, uh, I just want to say that assimilation is a good thing. We're always in the process of doing that. But when we assimilate into another culture, we think we have to give up our traditions and our cultures and become part of another culture and that is what's happened in our American Indian cultures. We leave our languages and our traditions behind and it shouldn't be this way. We have very, very rich languages and culture and those of us who are here tonight to share those things, we want you to participate with us and enjoy the evening so just kick back relax and let's have a good time uh, you know historically <clears throat> we Indians have been forced to do many many unpleasant things so in a tribal word past society decided to force a good thing we said let's get together and share language and culture culture and just have fun so let's do that um, now, I want to introduce our executive director, and we have uh, handouts over here, brochures and the agenda for the evening. If you don't have one, get one. Uh, but I'd like to introduce Alice Anderton, who is the executive director of Intertribal Word Path Society. Thank you, Margaret. Again, that's Margaret Malden. She's our board chair at Intertribal Word Path Society. I'm Alice Anderton. I'm the executive director. And uh, I'd like to greet you too, Margaret Stongal, and also to greet our other performers. We have, I think, five Indian languages represented tonight among the performances that you'll see. So I'd like to say, Hi, I'm Pak Yomda, Gus Palmer. Marawe Lucille McClung. Kwahat Randlett Edmonds, I'm not sure where he went. There he is. Kwahat Randlett. <laughs> and Halito Leroy Seeley and any other Choctaw friends that we have with us. I'd also like to greet all of you in the audience. Marawe Eka, as you say, to a group in Comanche. Thank you all. And them and the Comanche people, Atavits and the other Indian people, and Taiwa and the non-Indians. You're all very welcome here. And I'd especially like to uh, thank you all that came. Some of you I know drove a very long way, but the vendors, the performers, and some in the audience, I'm sure, as well. Thank you so much for being here tonight. There are about 25 Oklahoma Indian languages still spoken, and a lot of people, as Margaret said, just really aren't aware of that much of their neighbors. They don't know what we have in the state. And beyond that, they don't know how very fragile the situation is now for Indian languages and Indian cultures. Every one of those 25 languages is endangered to one degree or another. We hear so much about endangered species of animals and plants. And you know, if one or five or 10 percent of some, of say mammals are endangered, we think, oh my gosh, it's terrible, what a terrible state of affairs. 100 percent of Oklahoma Indian languages are in danger of dying out in a very short time if things are not turned around. So we'd like to draw attention tonight to the fact that there are Oklahoma Indian languages. They're very closely tied to Oklahoma Indian cultures. They're very beautiful and they're very, very important to people. If you'd like, they're very beautiful and they're very, very important to people. 
If you'd like to know more about the Intertribal Word Path Society, we have a table over in that corner. Come visit us and you can see our all Choctaw language TV show that we're running over there and find out more about our organization. Again, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. That's a Kiowa greeting for it's good to see you. Uh, I became interested in Kiowa narrative when I was a child. Uh, I don't consider myself a storyteller. I, I write stories and, and I uh, write poetry. But uh, as a child, I heard my grandfather tell stories in Kiowa. And uh, I was a pretty good listener. Uh, and so I picked up stories. And as I grew older, uh, I, uh, I had actually forgotten the stories when I was in school. But as I got older, I, I, the language started coming back. And uh, I began to recall some of the old stories that my grandfather told. And so I uh, started uh, looking at stories closer. Uh, I started recording stories and transcribing them in Kiowa and, uh, also, and then translating them into English. So what I want to do tonight is read an old story that was told to my grandfather by his father. This was an incident uh, in the very early years, see, in the turn of the century, when Kiowas used to go out and hunt deer, in this particular incident, there was an encirclement, a human corral of, of, of uh, hunters, Kiowa hunters, and in the corral, they had, they had surrounded a, a herd of deer, and they were there to uh, take the deer. And uh, it was during that time uh, of, of hunting that, that uh, an incident occurred that uh, my grandfather's father uh, remembered and, and told my grandfather about. And I'll just kind of go over that briefly before I read the story in Kiowa. And then after I read it in Kiowa, then I will uh, read it in uh, English. But at, in that incident, uh, the, the deer, it was, it was a, a doe, a mother deer, and she was coming along and began to sing a song. The old man was there and he heard the song and he asked all the other hunters to listen to the song. And that's the content of the story. The story tells of the deer mother singing to the hunters and appealing to their, appealing to them so that they would have compassion for the life of her, of her baby. She had a fawn, a, a baby deer with her. And so she was singing and didn't care whether she was taken by the hunters, but she was concerned about, about the baby. And so that's the content of the, of the story. And so it's a very beautiful story. And so this, the, if, you listen to the, if you listen to the story, you can hear there's a certain sound, there's a certain uh, quality of sorrow, I think, even in the voice of the deer. And so I'm trying to project this as well as I can and then read it to you in English and try to uh, uh, get some uh, uh, comprehension insofar as uh, you're understanding the story. And the name of this story is The Mother Deer, Her Death Song. Tong <laughs> Human corral. A all make dong ya. A an habe ko an a solha e ho da. O hayamon e ale. Nego tot so e ale. Hego Hego e kondo nego ta an doan. Dong ya konde. A Antoan Tongya, Giga Tongya, O A Ale, Nega O Tots O A Ale Tongya. E Pedo in O Boy, Hey Tito. Ta in Dob I got Tongya. At all the Tongya. E Day, Hey Go A Al Hope. Nego in de he got so ma do a donkia. Gigo em do I got donkia. Gigo dog ya hape. 
Ego, he got sang ya, tong ya. Got up, de a do ya, tong ya. Nego, a e, de gong do a. Nego, ya do con, tong ya. Hey, bait all hal, bait all hal, oh, oh, de he go am do o a. I got up in dog I got dog ya. Hey yeah ya, hey yeah ya, hey yeah ya, hey yeah yo, hey yeah yeah. Kono wa hit ode, aoye, ikya kihu oya, dog ya do. Hey, yeah, yeah. Em dog, I got a dog, yeah. Go, yeah, do, eh, at all, do. Now here's the English. He said they were camping. He said that. They made a human corral. He said that. Right here. They killed deer like that. They probably ran them along about there. And then they were coming in this direction. They were exhausted. And then that deer was heard singing. Grandfather said that. That deer was heard singing. He said that. And then he said, they chased it there. And then they ran it this way. He said that. And then he said, they chased it there, and then they ran it this way, he said that. He told the story for the children's sake. The deer sang, he said that. I heard it sing. They had chased it up close, he said that. The mother came up close, he said that. And then it sang, he said that. And then he sang the song. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yo. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here she came. He said that. And the deer's tongue was hanging out. He said that. And the deer's tongue was hanging out. He said that. And then behind her followed her baby. And then she began to sing. He said that. Hey. Listen all, listen all, there it comes singing, the deer is singing, he said that. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yo, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that I had died, I weep, I weep in fear for my child, this is my song. Hey, yay, yay. The deer, she sang. He said that. I was there and I heard it. This is a true story that I'm going to tell. I used to like to tell uh, animal stories like coyote, the bear, and owls and all that. But this story about my grandmother. And uh, I'm going to tell it in uh, English first, and then I'm going to go back and tell it in Comanche. Is that all right? <laughs> Excuse me, Lucille, I'm going to interrupt here for just a minute because we're running low on time. We only have a few minutes left. Lucille told a wonderful story. We'll only be able to show you some excerpts of it. But it was about her grandmother and another lady who were called to testify at a trial in Wichita Falls. And neither one of them spoke any English, so they had some pretty interesting adventures while they were down in Texas. And the part we're going to hear about is uh, after they had testified for a treat, they were taken out to dinner, and then they were taken to see a movie. Neither one had ever been in a movie house before. This, the show started, and you know, they used to, the first thing they would show would be the uh, news, news flash coming on. And then they would just sit there watching this show, and here come this train coming. 
and, and one lady, one of the ladies said, oh, if there comes a train, it's coming our way. It's going to run over us. Oh, it ran over us. <coughs> and the children down there, I don't think that, uh, that anyone watched show that day because they were the show that the two ladies were. <laughs> you come the Western, cowboys, and uh, uh, in part of the show, it showed this uh, stagecoach running, running, and then here were these outlaws chasing them. And uh, one of the ladies said, "Oh, she said, y'all better, y'all better whip your horses. They're getting real close to y'all. Hurry, hurry!" And then uh, she just kept getting louder, <laughs> and. <laughs> And then that uh, bug, that that stagecoach went around the curve there, and it turned over. And this lady said, "Oh, my precious children, they got in a wreck." <laughs> now, how many Comanches are here? Can understand what I'm almost telling you, Comanche? Sita, Sita, Guasita, Osa, Nunoragua, Bonito, Ina, Makwekwe. Sitak the show started, it gave the news, and then, you know, in, oh, I'm, I'm speaking in English. That means don't speak English. Ah, there we eat. You know, language preservation work is hard work. I think it's good to take a break once in a while from all of the curriculum development, recording, studying, teaching, and uh, just sit back and simply enjoy the beauty and diversity that's native language in Oklahoma. I want to thank the Norman Arts and Humanities Council and Target Stores and also Brian Levy for donations which helped make this possible. And thanks to the many volunteers who helped us out on Friday evening. Join us next time on WordPath.